a foreign correspondent is in the middle of a battle. Bullets are flying around him and he dives face first to the earth to save his own life. Except that he's actually watching this from about a mile away through binoculars on an apartment house balcony. A city is stormed and overtaken by a victorious force in fierce street by street fighting, leading to a policy change on the part of government, except that although the city exists, the fighting never happened. It's all entirely made up. A provincial capital is laid waste by a fire. Thousands of people die, livestock are destroyed, buildings are cratered. It is put about that this is the result of provocateurs' actions. But it's not. The city was firebombed by aircraft. A soldier is caught in the middle of a sortie on a hillside. He is shot at the moment that he is storming the breach. He falls backward dead on the ground. Except that there was no sortie, there was no battle. The whole thing was staged. We may think that fake news was invented in the last decade or so, but it has been around for a very, very long time and it is in no way more evident than in the very, very first modern media war, the Spanish Civil War, which, as some of you will remember, erupted in July of 1936 when a cadre of right-wing generals who were opposed to the policies of the left-wing government of Spain decided to take control of the country by force and started a revolution, a revolt that would last for three years, the war would last for three years, take hundreds of thousands of lives, destroy countless numbers of buildings. Uh, it would be also the kind of run up, the preview as it were, to World War II. One of the most, it was it, it, one of the most divisive and important events of the 1930s. And this war, for the very first time, unlike previous conflicts, was able to be covered by the press because of two very important things. One of them was access. For the first time, at least on the side of the government, which believed rather incredibly quixotically that telling the story, telling the truth, would be an important thing for them and would get the story out about what was happening to them, they allowed journalists to have access to the battlefields. They basically allowed them to embed themselves with troops anywhere. The other and much, much, much more important thing is that in the Spanish Civil War for the very first time, and this is something that's gone on until the present day, we have equipment that allows the media to report a story visually, immediately, seemingly, accurately. They had cameras for the first time, lightweight, small cameras that you could carry onto a battlefield as opposed to great big cumbersome ones that you had to wheel on to a, in a dolly. Um, they had fast film. They had movie cameras. They had radio. They had telegraph. They could really, really cover it. And as a result, millions of people suddenly could have a you are there experience of this war. What this meant was that an enormous battle was being waged, not just in Spain, but for the pocketbooks of the people who were reading about the war, watching the newsreels about it, looking at the photographs of it, and for the minds of those who were doing all those same things. You have a profit motive and you have, you have a policy motive, and they're all at the mercy of this malleable media that is reporting the war. The press rushed to cover this. It was the biggest story that was happening at the decade. 
And Ernest Hemingway was one of these uh, correspondents who came to Spain. This is a man who, at this moment in his life, was between novels. He was not sure what was happening with his own life. He felt at a, at, a, at a standstill and was looking to recharge himself. He said to a friend, it seems to me that Spain might be the big parade happening all over again. And he wanted to go there and cover this war because he felt that it might recharge his batteries and give him the new start he was looking for. He managed to wangle a very lucrative contract with the North American Newspaper Association that sent him over there. And because he was covering the Spanish government's side of the fighting, and because he was temperamentally inclined that way himself, he also felt that he should take the government's side. And he not only therefore was reporting stories, but he also had agreed to write the screenplay for a documentary film called Spanish Earth, which was going to tell the, uh, the story of Spanish peasants whose lives were being made better by this war, which is an arguable assertion all by itself, but in any case, um, the, the film was largely fictitious Almost everything in it is made up, as you can see if you want to watch it on YouTube, because you can. Um, Hemingway, while he was in Spain, did not actually manage to tell the truth in the way that he wanted to. Um, he appeared at a gathering at, the, um, at, at Carnegie Hall in order to promote the film that he was making. And at that gathering, he said, truth is very dangerous. It's very dangerous to write the truth in war, and truth is very dangerous to come by. But he himself was probably the first sinner in respect to not paying attention to the truth. He bent the truth in stories. He would represent himself as having been at events that he was not at, at being at the center of battles that he was not at the center of. Most obviously, as I was describing at the very beginning of this talk, he, he presented the battle for the Casa del Campo in, in Madrid as being a turning point in the war. It was instead an inconclusive skirmish which he himself was not even present at. He was witnessing it from miles away. Um, he did, however, get paid plenty for writing the, the, the dispatch that told about it. Another quite different person, Otto Katz, um, who was an agent of Stalin's Secret Service, who was a journalist, who was also an incredible and brilliant propagandist, and the inventor of something called the Agence Espagne, which was a combination spy ring and news service centered in Paris that was meant to act as a, uh, a broker for news from the Spanish Republic. Otto Katz, teamed up with a British journalist called, uh, called Claude Coburn and made up, in order to influence the French premier, he made up um, a firefight for a city in North Africa called Tetuan, a city to which he had never been, a city about which he had to read guidebooks in order to know what the streets were, and he completely invented a, a completely fictitious uh, battle for this, for this city. And when the news of it began to leak out through his own carefully orchestrated news reports, the French premier reversed a government policy and allowed munitions to be sent to Spain because he figured if these guys were winning, they ought to be able to have some guns to do it with. But of course, the whole thing was a put up job. Um, and it couldn't be checked because Tetuan was in Morocco, far enough away that it was really hard for anybody to get there and check it out. It's a real pity that uh, Virginia Coles, who was a uh, reporter for the Hearst newspaper syndicate, was not there at the time because Virginia Coles, 23 years old as she was, former debutante as she was, possessed of absolutely no foreign reporting experience as she was, nonetheless had an extraordinary instinct 
as a reporter. And when she heard the story of how a city in northern Spain, in, in the Basque country, had been uh, either bombed or possibly burned by its residents, she wanted to find out what was the real truth, what had really happened. And she traveled incredibly difficultly, but it would be a very circuitous route to get to the Basque country and find out what had happened. What she discovered was that in fact, although the nationalist rebels reported that this city had been burnt up by uh, provocateurs on the government side, what she discovered was that it had been strafed and firebombed by the Condor Legion, Nazi German uh, aircraft that had been sent by the allies of the Spanish rebels, the government of Germany. And she, she asked around, she finally found a guy who said to her, we bombed it and bombed it and bombed it, and bueno, why not? It's war, no. That was an extraordinary admission, and she was an incredibly um, tenacious reporter to get it. Finally, I just want to show you, here are some photographs taken by a photographer, Robert Capa, uh, who came to Spain from, on a circuitous route from Hungary, Germany, Paris, and finally arrived in Madrid. Capa was an anti-fascist emigre from Hungary. He arrived in Madrid determined to report what he thought was a real story coming out of Spain, the victorious, he hoped, effort of the Spanish government to hold off the, uh, the revolt of the fascist generals. It was a slow news month when he got there, and there was really nothing to photograph. So he got some guys to get in a car and wave their flags and look great, and that was a picture that he took. Um, he also was working at the time for uh, Henry Luce and Henry Luce's uh, March of Time newsreel series. This is a series from which Henry Luce used to say they believed in fakery in allegiance to the truth. Um, Kappa shot film for them, and he also went to the south of Spain, to Cordoba, and he, because nothing was happening there, he asked a bunch of uh, militiamen to, sh to just stage a battle. They would run up and down the hill, he would take photographs of them, and he would send the photographs back to Paris, and people would see what he hoped they would think was, was actual warfare. In the progress of this, in the, in the course of this happening, um, one of the soldiers was actually shot by a sniper. It was like real news had invaded fake news. The photograph changed Coppa's life in more ways than one. It was a picture that made him famous worldwide. He became known as one of the foremost combat photographers of all time. But it also changed him internally. He, his focus changed literally, quite literally. He began to realize that the most important thing was not what the picture should look like, that the picture should not necessarily tell the story that he thought it should tell. It should tell the truth. He exposed himself after this epiphany to incredible amounts of personal risk and danger and took a photograph such as this one of a dead militiaman in a tree. Um, Cobb is taking this picture at a time when he had been himself literally subject to being shot by the action that was going on around him. And he took more and more pictures like that. These stories are not happening today, they happen in 1936 to 1939, but we still have a problem with malleable media. As long as you can manipulate film, as long as you can plant stories on the internet, as long as you can make up something that has not happened and get it out there where millions of people will see it, 
you are going to have a problem with fake news. It's not something that we invented. It's been around forever. And the only way you combat it is by finding people who will go after the story no matter what, who will pursue the truth whatever it takes, the way Kappa did, the way Virginia Coles did. Until that happens, truth is really going to be very dangerous to come by. Thank you.